Slaughterhouse-Five, written by Kurt Vonnegut, is one of the most widely read anti-war books of the 20th century. We follow Billy Pilgrim, a 21-year-old American soldier in World War II. Throughout the book, rather than being on a linear journey, Pilgrim has flashbacks and fantasies that he believes are time travel. He describes himself as being unstuck in time. Instead of experiencing his story chronologically, he jumps between events and places. A rough outline looks like this. Pilgrim fought in World War II. He became a prisoner of Germany and was held in Dresden when it was destroyed by Allied bombing. Pilgrim survives because he was being held 60 feet underground in a former slaughterhouse. When the war ends, Billy has trouble returning to civilian life and he spends some time in a mental institution. Later, he marries and becomes an optometrist. Then, when his wife and he are celebrating their 18th anniversary, Pilgrim has a breakdown when listening to a barbershop quartet and becomes convinced that aliens, the Trafamadorians, abducted him and kept him in a zoo. In this video, I will argue that Kurt Vonnegut creates Trafamadorians to act as a friendly golem to Billy and time travel to work as a bridge monster to connect our disconnect of widely known but also widely misunderstood trauma that soldiers often suffer while also challenging us on how we should think about war, an often glorified act. I am just a figment of your imagination. Yeah, what a girl will read. Billy describes the Trafalmadorians as two feet high and green and shaped like a plumber's friend. The creatures were friendly and they could see in four dimensions. They pitied Earthlings for being only able to see in three. They had many wonderful things to teach Earthlings, especially about time. These aliens act as Billy's friendly golem, an escape that gives Billy what he's been craving since the beginning, the feeling of safety and care. Already when introducing the aliens, Vonnegut creates a creature as opposite to humans as possible. In the unfamiliar, Billy finds comfort, possibly because in the familiar he has found such violence and despair. The more we learn about the Trafalmadorians, the more we understand them to be a utopian society the opposite of the world Billy had experienced. They act as an escape hatch for Billy. They not only take him as far away from his past as he could get, but he's literally an animal in a zoo. His well-being and safety are in the hands of caretakers whose primary function is to keep him alive and content. As mentioned before, Trafalmadorians can see the fourth dimension, which allows them to create books where they read them all at once, not one after the other. There isn't a particular relationship between all messages, except that the author has chosen them carefully, so that when seen all at once, they produce an image of life that is beautiful and surprising and deep. To Billy, creating a world in which narratives don't hold a cohesive linear story almost justifies Dresden. When observed alone, Dresden is a tragedy. In the bigger picture of World War II, Dresden was useless. It was a city mostly of civilians, some Allied prisoners, and zero to very little military value. It was mostly a fever attack from the Allies to hurry up the war. By extension, the uselessness of Dresden implies Billy's suffering from Dresden was collateral. But in Trafalmadorian's narrative, Dresden doesn't need to relate to a bigger message or be compared to the context. Simply by occurring, Dresden is both important and unimportant, chosen carefully and read all together to create an image of life that goes beyond itself. In this, Billy finds a form of peace. Watch this, watch this! Time travel is another tool that Vonnegut uses to bridge our understanding of Billy's psyche and allows us to begin to empathize with the true unglorified trauma war can have on soldiers. Listen, Billy Pilgrim has come unstuck in time. Vonnegut writes, Billy is spastic in time. He has no control over where he's going next, and the trips aren't necessarily fun. He is in a constant state of stage fright, he says. 
because he never knows what part of his life he is going to have to act in next. At the time that Vonnegut wrote this, post-traumatic stress disorder wasn't officially in the psychology books, but it is undeniable that there are certain similarities between Billy's experience and symptoms of PTSD. Excellently described by Kathy Carruth in her book, Unclaimed Experience, she writes, The survivor often fails to understand his experience, since a traumatic event does not merely linger as a shocking disruption in his past. Rather, it forms an absence in the mind, one that is not known in the first instance, and returns to haunt the survivor later on. Vonnegut captures this experience. Time travel is a concept that we, as a culture, find easy to ingest. The familiar. It's a fun idea that has been explored in theory and depicted countless times in fiction. Flashbacks caused by trauma is notably less appealing. It's the unfamiliar. Like many mental illnesses, we have generally decided it's too unfamiliar and too unknown. It makes us uncomfortable. Historically, the solution to people with mental disabilities were to send them away. By combining time travel and Billy's flashbacks, Vonnegut presents a concept most people can't relate to and makes it familiar. It challenges us to accept that his flashbacks are vivid, true, and shouldn't be dismissed or diminished. Just as we accept that Marty McFly really went back to 1955, rather than questioning if his travels were merely a mad fever dream. Everything about Slaughterhouse Five demands we rethink what war is, means, and entails. The soldiers are the babies that Marion Vonnegut saw firsthand. Billy is possibly the most pathetic leading man Vonnegut could have created. And time travel is as absurd as the Trafalmadorians, which adds a level of satire. Vonnegut masterfully creates a narrative full of bridge monsters and friendly golems to effectively get his point across. He is writing about Dresden, but he makes it absolutely sure it is not a glorified war story. 